Everybody at home, thank you for turning on your TV onto this channel at this time. Got a little song called If You Want to Get to Heaven, Gotta Raise a Little Hell. Come on, see us. We- hey, Color Me Dad is a podcast about anything we think is interesting or funny, including lots of music and pop culture discussion ad libbed by us, three friends who have cracked each other up for the last 25 years. We hope you enjoy today's episode, Captain Ink Pen. Two weeks from now, what do we got going on? What'd you find out, Andy? Um, I'm going <laughs> to be that. <laughs> having a baby in two weeks instead of four or possibly five. We're going to find out the exact date Wednesday. Wait, instead of four babies, you're going to have one baby. That's... Yeah. Depends on how you look at it. I mean, it'd be good just to get it all out of the way with four babies, but... If I had four babies, I think I would just run. <laughs> run, baby, run. You'll be going plenty fast enough with just the one? <laughs> yeah, just I, the one will do it. <laughs> I am sure. I am sure. So, so two weeks from today, baby time. Well, I don't know if it's exactly two weeks. Uh, on Wednesday, she's going to have an appointment with her doctor, and they're going to talk about a date. And they're going to flip a coin every day. See, is it today? Nope, not today. Try again tomorrow. I'm kind of hoping it's a Saturday. Yeah, that always works out best. Well, I mean, Saturday is the actual date that she would hit 37 weeks. Oh. But I don't know if her doctor views delivering babies like I view going in you're and not rebooting cool computers. You're not yeah. cool enough doing it you're on not cool enough to have Honestly, a, you'll probably get a Friday morning. I mean, that'd be fine. Yeah. He's not cool enough to have a Saturday baby. He's going to have a Wednesday baby. <laughs> I was a Wednesday baby. Yeah, there you go. Good. Look I was you. a Sunday baby. You know, 1976. That makes mm-hmm. sense. I was born November 28th, 1976. The day... The Brady Bunch Variety Show aired. That's that's my tie-in with history. Your the day of your birth is actually the day before my wife's. Uh-oh. Hers is November 29th. Wow! So we got a lot of PHI on your wife. Give it. Tell us that uh, blood pressure again. <laughs> she had the other day. <laughs> you're also uh, you also you're also I guess extremely attracted to those. Uh, what's your sign? I don't know. I don't do Sagittarius? that. Sagittarius. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's my son's are. usually like no smoking because I like it too much. I'm into so. them, and especially if their birth date or their year of their birth ends in a six. <laughs> wow, seventy six. She's eighty six. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay, I got her date of birth. Your wife a, is eighty six. Yes, she's eighty six. Man, I'm into that. <laughs> First baby at eighty six. So, so you having a baby early? Yes. Not four of them, just one. Just one. Okay. As far as I know, just one. Okay. So her blood pressure's high. That's a. Uh, we were in the hospital all day Friday, and her doctor was like, you have this thing that uh, concerns us. So they are going to push the birth up from... So go home and we'll call you. That's actually what happened. I know. And it's, that's, that's the way it seems to go. Well, we were there. We got there at like 930 in the morning, and at like 2 o'clock, we were still there waiting. Um, yeah. They are waiting on lab results. And yeah, you're just pacing. Something's up. You know it. Well, they had a heart monitor on the baby and on her, and mm-hmm. everything was fine. I've and been through all this, so it's it's awful. I totally, totally sympathize with you. It was real boring, you know, waiting there, and she was very uncomfortable. We had our scheduled. We went to a barbecue joint the night before. I mean, that sounds like a good idea. That's how we celebrated. Okay. We greased her up. We love the, buddies. The end of our, uh, you know, married without kids life. We went to barbecue. You know, I've had more of those thoughts here lately. Um Every morning that I wake up, and there's no, no body crying, <laughs> I'm like, except you. These are the last days of this. I've been driving around Marshall cat calling. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sweet cheeks. <laughs> hey, that's two words and two and syllables. Man, that's a good name. Hey, sweet cheeks. Chump change over here. <laughs> How you doing? What's up, mustache? No, nope, that's one word. I think we had a conversation about this last week about how why are girls that are 20 terrible? (laughs) Girls that are 20 are terrible? Yeah, like I I try to picture like the the younger generation. Yeah, 
like Thinking about that generation. These guys that date really, really young women, you know, that are my age in their mid forties, and they're like, "I'm gonna date somebody 25." Why? I mean, you really want to know? I mean, I know the basic answer, but how could you stand it? Is what I'm saying. <laughs> no, well, no, I wasn't joking about the basic answer. The real answer is they had they have fallen into the trap. Okay, I mean that's the real answer. What is the trap? When you get guys, you know, they think, "Oh man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it again," right? They get, they have wife, kids, family, and then they're like, "You know what? I don't, I don't like this. I don't like this. Maybe the woman, whatever." And they they're gonna do it again in the or, trap, or maybe mm-hmm. like a. Uh, like a revitalization yeah. sort of thing. Like yeah. this will, even if it's not that, like starting that over, it's like this will make me, like just just because I can. Yeah, it will. And it's the last time that I can. I'm going to get older. And, right. you know, you never think you're going to get 40. I mean, you never think that. And then you're 40 I and you're can't. like, I can't believe I'm 40. And so guys fall into the trap. They think, I'm going to do it again. And th- this is going to be great. And in reality, they're going to have two families and lots of kids that they don't see. And it's it's a trap. Yeah, it's that sounds. Trap in the mind. That sounds worse. Yeah, well, it is, but when you're in the trap, I mean, that's why they call it a trap. Because you know, if you're walking through the jungle and you're fine, and then you fall down in a hole, and that's worse. You fell into the trap. Tasted fine. <laughs> <laughs> I just <Eight> don't. Rats. <laughs> I just don't. I don't understand because, uh, and I think when we were having this conversation, I brought this up, having to go around town for work and stuff. I'm constantly driving by the university, and I see these girls that you know would be the the ones getting catcalled and whatnot they're between 18 and 20 whatever they look 12 to me yeah like yeah, i don't it's not even a, a proper it's healthy, not even a thing like i a don't proper healthy mind it doesn't <laughs> register to me like at sees all. a young adult like, as that is a you know a child but so. it's strange like when does that happen like when, what age do you hit to where you're finally like I think they all look like my thir- like like mm-hmm. they all just they're they're kids. Well, I mean, I think as you get older, you just you kind of take that line with you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And you think of yourself as 25. I don't care how old I get. I see myself as 25 years old. Agreed. It's like I, no matter how what age you get, like yeah. your grandparents or whatnot, like you're just a kid. Yeah, I mean, a couple weeks you're ago, 50. I was in line at Kroger, and somebody somebody in front was buying booze, and so they said, "What's your date of birth?" And I swear, I had had a thought before that this woman i was like that woman's i don't she just looked really old <laughs> she's gonna and say 1930 she, she gave a year that is 10 years younger than me oh wow and so i was like i'm i'm old i'm older than i think i think ma'am my, ma'am please put that booze back yeah, please <laughs> please ma'am no yeah i mean she had not aged well but you know the point was she was legitimately 10 years younger than me and um i don't know i think that changes as you get older and you know being with people is work you know in a even in the best healthiest sense so to think of trying to carry on a conversation with somebody that's 22 to me seems exhausting and plus i think you start to appreciate (laughs) things about you know women your own age oh my gosh you're here again can you just shut up for a minute yes can you please stop talking but Andy, the gluten and the um, environment. It's just exhausting. Like, and yeah, you're giving them comedy gold and they can't pick up on one reference. <laughs> <you're learning that. laughs> like, Andy, you're gaslighting me. <laughs> you're gaslighting me in my iPad. Have you never seen mall rats? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. It wasn't. A, you weren't I born. wasn't born when mall rats came out, Andy. That's yeah. actually happened with guys that I've worked with here recently that were born the year I graduated high school. <laughs> I'm like, have you seen this or did you do this? And he was like, no, I was two. <laughs> <laughs> well, still. <laughs> still, you should need to go and watch that right now. That's no excuse. I, there was a guy I worked with once. We hounded him forever. Just watch it back to the future. Watch it. I come it's across those people quite everywhere. A bit, and I don't feel bad telling somebody that. You got to know what that is. You don't you even have just, to, you don't even have to seek it out. Like just if you turn on TBS ever at some point they're, they're gonna, playing a marathon. Yeah. But I mean, you can seek it out. I mean, you you know you can go. It's on Amazon. You can probably pay two bucks. Watch Back to the Future. I don't, have never seen Back to the Future. Have seen every Fast and Furious. Oh yeah, right. Oh. Yeah. Those are, you know, well, that's, that's their family. That's cinema. Movies. That's family. 
I've always wanted to sit down and watch them because I want to know what part of the story is always so unresolved that they have to make <laughs> nine of them. We should, <laughs> we should watch the. I've, 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 I've never seen one because I just I won't do that to myself, but we should all watch one together oh and just record gosh. commentary. I remember when they came yeah. out and we could do that. <laughs> yeah. Really do a that. A reaction a, video of the Fast and the Furious. That's a great idea, Josh. Mm. That's a great idea. Those are the only have. kind I have. <laughs> <laughs> we should put it on and put it in our headphones so nobody can <laughs> hear it. <laughs> and and they're just listening. Okay, everybody, you're now going to listen to us watch Fast and Furious. It, was just, it would just be a lot of... Uh, <laughs> uh, gosh. Do uh, uh, you like sweaty bald men? <laughs> <laughs> There's always like one girl that, you know, is tough on the outside and... and and then the guy's he's tough nice and mean, to but he's got a heart, heart of gold. gold. <laughs> and when he speeds next to me, I think that's my man. He drives fast because he has to. <laughs> well, if you're not first, you're last. <laughs> if you're not first, you're last. I've I heard look, that. I look for examples of that all over town. When I'm driving around anywhere, especially on the interstate, you can tell the people that that is like their life motto, whether they're saying those words or not. That's what they mean. <laughs> like if I. There, there have been t- <laughs> like somebody's just driving around by themselves, mouthing it to themselves. I, like, I gotta be first. Really, I'm, I'm first. Get out of my way. If I you, have seen people about come up behind me. You know, get out of my way. And I can actually move over and let them. And they get to the next car. Get out of my way. It's and it's like mo- it's their motto in <laughs> line at the grocery store. <laughs> get out of my way. Get out of my way. <laughs> my favorite thing on earth to do is to frustrate rednecks in big pickup trucks. <laughs> If, well, if just, they're in front of you, they go really, really slow and turn slow. And if they're behind you, they then, are insufferable. They're getting mad just seeing your car. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, it's a foreign, it's a foreign <laughs> car. I drive a Kia. So <laughs> Mr. Toyota, get out of That is strike one. And then there's Oh, the you got a soul, do you? <laughs> you better give it to the Lord, son, because here I come. As soon as I... <laughs> The Lord may have your soul, but your butt is mine. Yeah. My, my grandmother used to, used to say that. <laughs> Better give your heart to the Lord because your hind end's mine. Go ahead. Sorry. No. <laughs> it's just a game I like to play because they're very easily manipulated. It's- We've got to take that road trip to Boone County. <laughs> no. We've got to. <sighs> I mean, that's not. That's a little different. We could make a podcast where we're driving around Boone County. No, that's and that's way better than I would much rather do that than watch Fast and Furious. I don't know, like a live remote. We'll just set up a, a tent somewhere. Just a lot of us. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay for the gas. <laughs> that's that's mean, that means something these days. Believe me when I say <laughs> yeah, that. It's, yeah, never mind. I'd like to retract my statement. It's pretty boring. Not till Trump gets back in there. Then I'll pay for the gas. It's boring down there. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> in Boone County? Yeah, I mean. Well, I've, I've never been. so Here's what will happen. We'll drive. I've never been either, but I assume it's not boring. I saw that. From what I've seen, from what I've heard tell. And why? Wait, stop <laughs> right there. That is a, a statement that I'd never heard in my life until I met my wife. What? Heard tell. I heard tell. Heard and tell. I don't know why that struck me strangely. You're but spending way too much time downtown, bub. I've never heard that before. I was like, what did you say? And she was like, heard tell. She was what like, about pray tell? No, I've heard that. And pray do tell. what pray tell did you mean? I've heard that, but I don't know. Heard tell just sounds most... like a late 90s emo band. You know what freaks hey, everybody thanks, out? Thanks for coming out, guys. We're heard tell. This is off our new album, The Trees in the Bay. Know us by the circles in the sky. <laughs> We had to put, make it a double album so we could fit the title on uh-huh. but <laughs> <But it's, laughs> <it's, laughs> um, What freaks people out everywhere else in the world is, I'll, I'll tell you what, or I'm going to tell you what. Let me tell you what. What is that? I hear in Texas it works. That's about it. Yeah. I'm boring the crap out of you guys. <laughs> I'm just going to shut up. I got nothing to say. Shut up. I got nothing to say, and I expected <clears> you <throat> to be a big bowl of anxiety today because... You're you're there. I don't, you're, you're right there where we've been talking about since we started this. I thing. think my wife feels that way. You're, just, you're not processing that yet. I can't do anything about it. I it's mean, fun being us because we know like both sides. I don't know how bad it's imagine. about to be. We kind of know everything's going to be okay, but he he's <sighs> not going to be able to hear that. Yeah, the truth is, it is going to be great. Really, yeah. it is going to be great, and you can try to prepare yourself for the rearrangement of your priorities and the way you think about. 
I mean, everything. It changes the yep. way you think about everything. Suddenly it's like, I don't know. I, it's hard to explain other than everything just kind of changes and it's different. I'm expecting that to happen. And my wife and I approach these kind of things way differently. She's already planned out probably the first five years of her life. Of, you know, our, my daughter's life. She, she, <laughs> not hers, but my daughter's. Uh, she tries to envision every scenario, everything that could possibly happen. She has a plan for, her, and and you're so out of like. I mean, I'm just like it'll be fine, and that well, drives her insane. I mean, that that you, that you think it's going to be fine, and it's, you don't need a contingency fine. plan for everything that could possibly go wrong. I have enough confidence in my ability as a person to be. I have the approach, and I learned this a long time ago, and this kind of helped me stay sober. Is me. Freaking out emotionally about anything is not going to change any part of that situation. Bamo. Yeah. So the only thing I do have control over is how I feel about things and how I react to them. And I believe that I'm a competent enough adult that no matter what the situation is, I'll figure out a way to, to deal with it. And I always like to think 50 billion people in the history of the world have had babies yeah. and went and it went fine. Yeah. <laughs> so it's probably going to go fine. I was thinking about... All that in a roundabout way, even earlier today, it's funny that you say it like that because I was I was telling a friend, like they were like, How's everything been going? And man, it's been it's been raining hard on me and the fam for the past three weeks or so. It's just been one thing after the other. Yeah. And just the whole when it rains it pours sort of thing. But it's funny though, because you know, this stuff happens frequently and it's just it's just always okay. Like we talked about the thing with my dad. Mm-hmm. Thought we were gonna lose him. Dad's home. Dad's doing fine. Dad's okay. Uh, both my sons, like you know, have stuff going on with like sur- upcoming possible surgeries and whatnot. And you know, one's like, oh, we'll just do this, and this will be okay. And and this, you know, it's it's all this worry and all this anxiety. It always ends up being okay if you don't, you know, if you, you know, of course I, you know put that all on God and watch it out and putting faith in that and that kind of stuff, whatever. But no matter what you believe, it's just kind of no matter how, what I'm getting at and saying it yeah, poorly that. is no matter how many times it's always okay. Every time something else comes up, you're just like, Oh no, this is the one. You this is the worst. how it went before. Yeah. And yeah. that is, that's a, that's a theme of my life. Like things turn out well or, you know, they, I have an issue we get through it, and then I look at it tomorrow and think, well, there's no way that's going to work out. I get <clears> so <throat> bent out of shape about the smallest. I, I went and got that dang tattoo this week, like telling me to stop worrying so much. I got a good tattoo story. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll, I'll set this up for him because we were <laughs> we were texting the other night, and he was, I was like, sorry, for, he was you know texting us about the hospital, the doctor's appointment and whatnot. I was like, oh, sorry for not responding back. So now I'm, I'm getting a tattoo. And he's like, what are you getting? Yada, yada. And however it came up, uh, he showed me, he's like, yeah, I want to get this tattoo I have covered up. And I was like, oh, I've never seen that. And he's like, yeah, I, I got it in a trailer. And I said, well, don't tell me anymore then, because if you got a tattoo in a trailer, it's, it's we really want to hear big. about it here. You may not even know about it. I don't keep track of all your tattoos. I mean, I've only got two. Certainly where you got them. I imagine if you just hear... Me or him, either one, just say tattoo. You're just immediately shaking your head. Well, no, I th- like, when you say tattoo, idiots. I think of the little guy on um, <laughs> the plane. I'm Fantasy saying Island. Fantasy Island. If one of us yeah. says, I just got a tattoo, you're just, I like, just like, ah, okay. Because, you know, That's that money you. was extra. It doesn't need to go anywhere, but your butt or wherever you put the tattoo. <laughs> I would have more tattoos if I could afford them, but it's I can't afford any, so I yeah, they're they're expensive. It's worked out for me. But there I do have this one particular tattoo on my chest that my wife hates oh. and has been after me <laughs> yeah, it's one of those. <laughs> for two years to get it covered up and I keep him hawing around and making excuses about why I can't do it. One is cost. It's gonna be expensive, it needs covered up and it's kind of big okay the other thing was covid you know where my tattoo is on my chest there would be some dude breathing in my face for five or six hours uh, does that hurt <laughs> uh, is that okay <sighs> and the other thing is is Just when put I, some vicks on it <laughs> yeah <laughs> the other thing is where i got this tattoo was extremely painful and i don't know if the cover-up will be as painful but i thought you were talking about the trailer well, I mean, 
So, <laughs> I'll tell the story. You're never going to get a good Let's tattoo in a trailer. <laughs> like, my exact response to him was, I love you so much. That's one of the worst tattoos I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, no. It doesn't matter what, what it was says. Was the trailer moving? No. Okay. <laughs> we, okay. weren't, we weren't going down the road. <laughs> I got it in the bus. <laughs> Next stop. So what is the tattoo of? Can you say that? or It is of a person's name. Oh, uh, okay. Which... My dear friend Josh has made that mistake himself. I have. I have. It's covered up. Rusty. I understand. <laughs> and you know, I should have got And I wound up marrying her. <laughs> you did. You did in a roundabout way. Um, Save money on the cover up. Yeah, you should have just left it. Yeah. Maybe you can tell that story next. And it rains at poor. <laughs> so, so, the trailer. The so needles. here it's it's 2009 and i have made my first like real concerted like real effort to um get clean and i don't know if you guys have ever been around somebody freshly clean that is just coming out of a 10-year fog of drugs but you're insane <laughs> They make bad. They make bad choices. I make bad choices, <laughs> and this was. We are very. We are very irritated and irritable. No, it was the opposite. It was. Happy I'm about very everything. emotional. Everything's great. Yes. Nothing's ever going to go wrong. I can feel things for the first time. Uh, like I am starting to live like a human being again. Like my place that I lay my head is not disgusting. I'm showering regularly. I can feel emotions, sorta. Um, You've got me feeling emotion. I listen to that daily. Did you listen to that? <laughs> daily. Um, so, with that being said, one of the things that you're not supposed to do when you first get clean is get into a new relationship. <laughs> get tattoos. Well, we're getting there. <laughs> Nothing permanent. <laughs> Nothing permanent. Definitely don't get into a new relationship. And you guys... Let's know. get married. <laughs> you guys know my history when it comes to... Uh, relationships as far as I'm usually always in one. Uh, they call him quick draw. <laughs> <laughs> That's another one. <laughs> two, two words. The two positions syllables. filled. <laughs> but I'm always taking applications. <laughs> <laughs> you may have to explain that. One. I don't think I do. <laughs> You're right, Bamba. I don't think I do. <laughs> Uh, the position's always filled. <laughs> I'll tell that story again. <laughs> so back to this. So I get in a new relationship, and of course I'm insane, and everything is super intense, and I'm like, yeah, this is the one. And it was, she was definitely not the one. Um, so we came up with this bright idea that we were going to get our names tattooed on each other. Your idea or hers? Um, you don't remember. Honestly, I don't remember. Um, we both had tattoos of other things, so I'm sure that's what led yeah, to that it conversation. Yeah, kind of loses its, its hole. <laughs> After you start getting them, it's like, yeah, whatever. So it's kind of a side story. The guy that did the tattoo was a guy that I met in AA, and I worked for him. He owned a construction company, and he was also an amateur tattooist. And where he lived, his property, he had a trailer he lived in, and then he had a trailer that was like his tattoo studio. And he wanted the practice of doing them. So he was like, I'll do it for free. <laughs> I was like, first, yeah. Wow. <clears throat> it's crazy. There's an old saying about too good to be true. Everything's coming up, Andy. <laughs> I was like, this could not be a better idea. <laughs> so we, we come up with this really terrible design. And he, <laughs> the, name is, the name is almost tribal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like the name has like thorns. Look, kind of it's a bad. I'm sorry. A, if I, I, I knew that, I, if bad, I don't. I'm not trying to be a jerk about it. It's just it's you know, because it's I know I know you don't care. Uh, no, <laughs> no, I don't care. I'm, <laughs> I'm not defending it. Like, what's wrong with you, buddy? This is this is oh, this is art. <laughs> just you know. <clears throat> Yeah, it's it's bad. Okay, <laughs> it's real bad. I have okay. seen just for it's, the listeners. I have seen it. I pulled my shirt down. He looked time. like the it, doctor, like when you show him the infected area. It will not be okay. on our Instagram. Okay, okay. No, this so is not going we, on our Instagram. Now, what do we? How do we proceed with this? So we come up with a design, 
he goes to tattooing and <laughs> it hurts worse than anything I've ever felt in my life because he is doing the tattoo very, very, very deeply into my skin. Like, don't make sure it sticks. <laughs> we're making sure this is permanent. So you run your, if you run your hands over it today, like you can feel like it's like an embossed business card. <laughs> I'm not going to run my hands over it. <laughs> it hurts. It's braille. Josh, Josh, you just tell me what it's like. It's like braille. Yeah. <laughs> it hurt a lot. <clears throat> it took months to heal. It's like a Hot Wheels track. <laughs> It just added to the fact that it was a bad decision. Scratch and sniff. <laughs> I don't want to smell it. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. it. Smells like rust and broken dreams. <laughs> okay, so bottom line, you got to get that covered up at some point. I got to get that covered up because I mostly forget that it's there most of the time. Yeah. And so <laughs> I remember when I first met my wife and she was like, what is that? And so I had to explain that story. And she was <laughs> ever like, been in a trailer. <laughs> you want to know what though? That's your own fault because it's absolutely my fault. No, no, no. I'm saying you didn't even have to tell her that was a chick's name because she would have never been able to read it. <laughs> <laughs> you could have told her that's that's hope, hope. It says hope, strength. <laughs> it's Chinese. <laughs> those are, those Chinese are, that's yeah. Chinese for whoops. <laughs> So she was immediately like, you're getting that covered up. And I have delayed as long as I can. And I, honestly, I want it covered up. I'm just scared it's going to hurt really bad. And I got to find somebody that I trust enough to do it. Because it's going it, to, it'll have to be really, really dark. It's a big, that's it's a, a big, big black, that's a big black tattoo. And it's going to be a, a careful cover like you know what i'm saying like it's gonna be uh and it's really close to my nipple which i'm not happy about <laughs> you're gonna have to get that tattoo too you're gonna put a spider web over it no i'd spider rather web. have it lasered off than to do that but i do have a design picked out i want to get over it looks like of it. one of your shirts you showed it to me yeah can you make cargo cargo shorts on there <laughs> We'll do some cargo shorts. Actually, I was at Walmart and I, I found some cargo shorts yesterday, and I was like, I want these. I, no lie, no lie. I was at Walmart yesterday, mm -hmm. and I had a pair of cargo shorts in my hand to to buy for you. That I was actually going to bring them today as your push present. I think that cargo shorts are okay. What are not okay is dirty cargo shorts that go to my calves that. Are twenty five years old. Did these have the uh, the little strings that hang at the bottom of the? No, leg? and I refuse to wear those. <laughs> <laughs> this was from the new Summer George collection. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I, but I, ha I have those the same cargo shorts. It's supposed they to be have the Summer strings. George. Jo Josh and I have a lot of the uh, George ensemble from Walmart. Uh -huh. The Summer of George. This is George. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about your top shirt. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of dress shirts. There's yeah, Summer of George. They don't hold up very well. No, no, they don't. I was at Walmart yesterday, too, and I was like, ooh, the new Summer George collection. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all these new prints. <laughs> They're all exactly the same. Oh, now the Prince collection I would wear. You don't shop George. You're not, you don't shop George anymore, man. You're all about the JCPenney. You're, you're beyond that. Actually, I'm kind of into Ralph Lauren now. Wow. Mm. But only That's you, a long way. I buy, You've come a long way, baby. I can't, from Goodwill. That's where I started. I'm, I <clears throat> went to Goodwill this week. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> I actually went to Goodwill yesterday. So. Did you find anything cool? Um, I found this. Nope, and he bought it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I actually found a big thing you hang on the wall, and it's, it was a W. Um, I don't know what it was for, but I was really tempted to bring that home and paint it blue and hang it somewhere. Your office? I could hang it in my office. I've been looking for a frame for a super drag poster I have to hang in my office. Is it the one where they're all four individually sitting in There's chairs? No, it's actually the cover of um, my favorite Super Drag album, which is In the Valley of Dying Stars. And it's really elongated. That's the problem. It's like mm -hmm. I could find a frame for it if it wasn't like 18 inches I used tall. to have that same poster. Really? In the Valley of Dying Stars is probably my favorite Super Drag record now as well. But you, you had to come upon that over years or something. Yeah. It was my favorite from the probably the week it came out. Now I will say this: uh, everyone that loves Super Drag, 
they 90% of them were always going to go for head trip in every key. That and while I love favorite. head trip in every key, mm-hmm. it's never been my favorite. Yeah. And I would also think the prime best example of super drag and what they do mm-hmm. still to this day is slot machine in the phaser. Oh, they, you take those two songs. That is my argument for why regretfully yours is my favorite album. Cause you can listen to it from start to finish mm. and there's a theme. There is John Davis hates. Yeah. Record. I disagree. I love totally. that. album. Now some I of my favorite totally. songs from super drag <laughs> are off of Valley. Valley. Yeah. I love true believer. Um, but keep it close to me. Keep it close to me. Lighting um, the way. Yes. So for me, Valley is the one that you just turn on. There's no skippers. You just let it go the whole way to Charleston or wherever you're going, and it's just perfect. And it had to me, it has a theme. I know Josh didn't agree with. I don't care for head trip. I, I don't mean, agree with what the theme. I I hear this theme that may or may not be real. I've made it up, but I I hear a guy like throughout the songs and you know true believers kind of at the end and i know like to me i hear him like reaching for something different in his life like sobriety or something i know you say maybe he didn't really it wasn't that way but it's just what i hear it could be i mean it was uh it was getting it's getting close to it could have been a subconscious thing right it's, uh, it's real close to that era yeah and then you got the death of his dad which i guess is ambulance driver in there it's, was it grandfather too? Was it grandfather as well, or was it his grandfather? Oh, or not maybe it was his grand. Okay, yeah, I don't know the story as well. The, but grand, anyway. the grandparents I know were uh, really, really, uh, like, really important to his uh, his life. Like, bought him uh, the the first four track that he still uses to this day. That's and I think his PV Predator or whatever PVT fifteen guitar, all that Man, kind of stuff. We're gonna. We're going to do a podcast. With I would Mr. love John to do Davis. that. He doesn't gonna know way more details about Super Dragon. I would love I do. to do that. I, I just from the from the moment I heard Valley, you're just as interested as anyone listening to this right now. <laughs> yeah, right. Cool. Okay, okay, so back to it. So, do you think that I realized that I do something weird when I listen to music that I wondered if you guys also did, which is I don't think we're allowed to talk about that on the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> what do you? I won't allow it. What's more important to you when you listen to a song? When to me. And I don't know if this is some disability that I have, but it is. <laughs> I rarely can Another underst- one. <laughs> I rarely can understand the lyrics that anybody is saying unless that I read them. Like if I read them, then what they're saying becomes clear. But if I just listen to a song 90% of the time, I cannot understand a word they're saying. So what attracts me to certain music is how it's written, how it's arranged. Um, and I think all of us having been musicians or currently are, uh, <laughs> I'm more impressed by interesting arrangements or like, oh, that's cool how you did that. But I, w- I don't think other people listen to music that way. And I think song and melody is, is typically the thing that's most important to them. I think it depends on what it is because I have lots of things that I listen to that as I've t- taken time to look at the lyrics, either they don't mean anything yeah. or it might be something that I, I maybe don't even like, but I still might like that song. Yeah. And then the reverse of it, you know, where... So like lyrically, it's it has so much meaning that the fact that it doesn't sound great, you know, like quality or something like that, I can look over it. So I mean, there's always something you can grab and hold, kind of pull it up to the top and say, "This is what it's about." And so I don't care about you know the other parts of it. I think I find myself listening to music that has zero lyrical <clears throat> content or meaning. It's like it's like you know you like to watch a drama and then you like to watch a comedy. I mean, it's really the same thing like sometimes i love music like that where i could care less what, what it they're means. saying um and it's just a great drive you know? i but feel then, i think a lot of times and i think <laughs> I, I don't i think this is a fault of mine i think i take music too seriously sometimes to the point to where lyrics for me can really either make it or break it in the sense that we're like say if i hear a song that i like a lot and I don't know what the lyrics are. I'm like, oh, I really like this a lot. And then if the song has really great lyrics, then that makes me love the song. However, I, there's, there are bands out there like Turbo Negro, which is like one of the best, like most rocking bands ever. Never heard but of But the lyrics are about a pizza parlor. So it makes me just not care about it. Like, it's like, oh, you guys don't take it seriously. So neither do I. I understand what you're saying. Like, you, you want to, like, personally relate to what the person. And like, I don't have to. Like I still, helps. I still will, you know, jam out to some Turbo Negro. Like but at that. the same time, it's like if they had, 
you know, now I just kind of like Turbo Negro. Yeah. And if it was, if they had really great lyrics, I would love Turbo Negro. Because that person writing the lyrics understands something That's, you personally I mean, yeah, you gone relate through. to it. You know, the only I, band yeah. I can think of that I feel that way about is probably Jimmy Eat World. There's a Man, lot of that's weird. I've been listening to tons of Jimmy Eat World for like the past two weeks. They are probably, if I had to pick a favorite brand, like if I had to commit to one, they would probably be it. I saw them live many, many times. What? Yeah. <clears throat> like I was in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I was just saying it was when I lived in Atlanta. <laughs> I'm saying it was a lot easier to see. I'm sure. Basically, I'm sure. yeah, time. they're not coming here. And I've seen them. A lot, and they were always really, really bad. And then now I see that them online. That would be my watch expectation. Like, and that now I watch them expectation. online, though, and now I see them, and they're great. And I think <laughs> yeah, I, I think a lot of it has to do with how everyone's rocking in-ears now. I think it really helps you a lot of You think that matters? Also, it seems to. Mm-hmm. Not everybody. And that's what yeah, I've learned. Everybody's, ro- everybody's doing in-ears. All recorded music they have is improved. They have improved drastically. They also have another dude that they added in, like a like a – Auxiliary player, kind of, he's play got, guitar he's, and keys yeah, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, a pat smear. <laughs> well, and you know, young, younger bands are especially live. I mean, there is more energy. I mean, I, I these guys are probably close to <clears throat> fifty. Right. I'm I'm not the biggest Pearl Jam fan in the world, but if you watch like early Pearl Jam to now, I mean, it's just you know people jumping off of Eddie Vedder's not right. crowd surfing. No, or jumping they're off all the, just standing still. You know, because we want to play tomorrow. And so, yeah, right. we want to get up tomorrow and walk around. So, you know, it, as you get older, it's like, okay, we're not going to run around. So we can put the energy into making right. it better. So he has one of those, uh, Jim Atkins from Jimmy world has one of those voices. Like the way he, uh, he always sounds like he really means yes. what he's singing. Kind I, of in regard, kind of like Wes in the way I kind of always heard that one. Yeah. The, like Wes y- kind the, of stuff. He has a good passion behind his. It, it doesn't his feel lyric fake. delivery. Yeah, like I believe what he's saying. Right. Did you ever listen to Jimmy Eat World before he was the lead singer? Like on yeah, it's Static not, Prevails. It's not that great. Yeah, it's it's not good. It, it was a good decision of theirs to switch. So okay, so um, you guys ever think about your funeral? Never. Now. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> I will now. Yeah. Thanks. It's funny we talk about it sometimes, and I made some comment. Uh, we. We went to a funeral, and and the individual who passed away, it's like one of those situations where they they knew for a long time. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And I guess when you know, you start thinking, oh, I want you know somebody to do this at my funeral and that at my funeral. Turn it into like my sweet sixteen, <laughs> right? Exactly. And uh, be a good new reality show for MTV to take on. And I said, uh, my I said, gosh, funeral. I don't care. Just dig a hole, you know. That's and just go straight it. to the hole, right? And just put me in there and and my wife was like no i just i want i want to it'd be a lot better if i had a list and i said okay let's make a list <laughs> please tell me you have it <laughs> i don't ha- it's in my mind but you guys are involved so okay. if you outlive me it's it's hard to do this because who's going to pr- outlive me i promise to you if that you, you i would do everything on that list if you wanted me to now you said that before you heard it because I want you two together to pour. I, I promise I'll make fun of Andy for whatever it is he has to do now. You guys together are going to go up and pour sugar on my body while they play pour sugar on me. <laughs> Literal pour, sugar, pour on sugar on me. I want to blast pour some sugar on me. Not and you a guys dry dump eye sugar in the house, boys. That's right. I'm, They'd be laughing and dying. When I, no, where it'll be a lot of sure. elderly family members looking very confused is what it'll be. No, no. And and it's, my wife like, will be like, he, he wants some weird stuff. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I think that that's what a true blue friend is. And I want everybody to come to my funeral and be like, I can't believe it's my last opportunity to wow. To troll out. people? Yeah, to troll people. Exactly. You thought you were coming to a solemn funeral? We're going to play pour some sugar on me? Well, see, you think, you think this is very <laughs> out there and hilarious. I have these two friends of mine that used to that did talk about this back in the day. Two of the guys from In Stereo that played with us, and mm-hmm. on one of our trips on the road in the van, they were discussing this, planning to die. And these guys had known each other since childhood or whatever, and they are talking about this, and they're saying, "Well, at my funeral, you have to do this, and mine, you have to do this." The ones they came, the ones they, what they came up with was <laughs> one said, "Okay, well, I just want to make everybody laugh one last time." So at the end of my funeral. Before we get there, I want both legs and both arms completely broken. 
and at the end of the funeral, you shoot me out of a cannon. So I'm <laughs> <laughs> like the car dealership guy. Across at the end of the Wacky funeral. Wednesday prices. Right. <laughs> and the other and the other guy responds with, "Well, if I die first, you have to wait ten years, and then after ten years after I die, my kids meet you at my gravesite. You dig me up, pull the skull out." Put a snake through the eye holes, catch the skull on fire, and hold it up in front of my kids. That's, that's the worst thing I've ever yeah, heard. That's, awful. that's, that's terrible. That's not funny at all. I and none of those funny. things could you really do because <laughs> there are laws about treating a corpse and stuff yeah. like that. You could dump sugar on a corpse if he wanted it and had it in writing. I think that would work out. Not as funny, though. That's pretty funny. You ever heard pour some sugar on I me at I'd, a funeral? I think I'd rather break I think your it'd arms. be the. F- <laughs> <laughs> you have to do it before and or it's a crime i always remember being young and hearing my great grandmother talking about dying and how she was terrified to die because she just knew when they closed that casket she was going to smother to death <laughs> <laughs> it that's the worst fear i've ever heard of she thinks time. she's going to really be in I her just, body still just can't move i it. just don't know how i'm going to breathe in there josh you're not <laughs> you're dead <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, what's, yeah. <laughs> in the old days, they'd tie a string to your toe and you know put it on a bell up top. They would do that kind of stuff because well, they didn't embalm the bodies. And well, Mamma says to her, "I says I'm going to put a straw in there, <laughs> and everything will be okay with the kind with sugar in it." It seemed, it seemed to ease her mind. <clears throat> I tell you the kind of funeral I've always wanted in Viking. Yes, yes, exactly that. <laughs> like. Why? Put me on some kind of fancy whatever and set that thing on fire and shoot oh, they me down burn the river. You. They burn you? Yeah, but I think that would be pretty traumatic for the they would be people awesome. there. They would be awesome. Like, do it in the ocean, right? Yeah. You get ha- like the boat's on fire. You're out there. All your family, your wife and kids are all standing back just in tears. They can't <laughs> deal with it. All of a sudden, you pop up, fire extinguisher, put the fire out, flip them off, and keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> I will not be allowed to have something like that. God, no cargo shorts or Viking funeral. No Viking funeral kind or cargo shorts. Household you dealing with over there? I don't really care about what no happens to me fun. after I die. I mean, I'm dead. What do I care? I mean, that's how I feel. I just don't but go, I do I care that backyard. everybody else has a funerals are for the people that are alive. <clears throat> not for I just don't the like dead. to think about it, man. I cannot. Do I do care that about. somebody has a chuckle. If we're going to go through the whole thing about showing up and having a thing, yeah, let's have some laughs. I don't really fear death because I've cheated it a few times. I've, I've been real close two or three times to dying. And I'm not saying that I was always aware that that's what was happening. But after I woke up and, you know, I knew I was within minutes or hours from dying like twice twice two times for sure that it happened to me a few other times i deserved to be dead but i don't know i just don't i don't fear it like if i knew it was happening like if somebody was like in 10 minutes your heart's gonna explode yeah of course i'd be scared right but i don't think about it i've often deserved sugar poured on me (laughs) what's even funnier about that reference is by the time that you die say you live another 30 years no one's gonna have any idea that's gonna be 70 years old everybody Talking about your references bombing with all the kids there, all those kids are like, he's doing what? What, <laughs> what is it's, it's a it's a deaf a deaf leopard? It's a is that what it is? That's gonna be like the equivalent. Dad wants a deaf leopard at his funeral. Somebody did somebody's to, gonna have to go. He's got his stupid friends coming over for a deaf leopard. <laughs> It'd be like somebody today wanting the Andrew sisters played at their funeral. Like nobody would get Could it. Could you guys play the Andrew Dice Clay C D <laughs> just one more time? No. Eddie Murphy delirious that is at the, my funeral. The ice cream oh, stuck on the ice cream man story. Uh. That I remember watching that when I was like eleven years old and I have never laughed so hard in my life. That is what made me love stand up. I liked him as a zebra. You know what? Eddie Murphy movie that I absolutely adore. It's a joke. Everyone, he everyone hates it. Nutty Professor. No, that I mean no. Everybody, I mean those have Beverly like, Hills Cop. The family scenes with Nutty Professor. Everybody kind of can get behind or whatever. Like those are always funny, yeah, because they're funny. Norbit. Eh. Was he? Is was really he? Funny did he play movie. a twin of himself? Is that no. what it was? But he was like a nerd or yeah, something. Yeah, he was like a really like. I don't remember Norbit. I remember he, he played also a twin played, of himself. He played his very demanding, uh, overweight wife. 
Oh, now, yeah, that part was. And he fell she in was love the, with this, like, was childhood. Was it Janet Jackson? No. No, no that was Nutty no, Professor. No, that's, that's Nutty Professor. Yeah, she was, I think that was the second Nutty Professor. Yeah. But, yeah, Norbit was just a, uh, he grew up an orphan. And he also played the head of the orphanage, was, which was a, a, an Asian guy that he played in full makeup and all that garb. And, <laughs> I think I have seen um, that. Um, Cat Williams and Eddie Griffin are in it. They play pimps. No way. The town pimps. Yeah. <laughs> no way. Talk about typecasting. <clears throat> he, he is pretty funny, though. Any of you guys think up stuff for this podcast now, now that we've reached the... I try to, but... Episode five and six era... So I always do, and I'll write them down or save them, and then we get here, and I just don't even look. Oh, I'm looking. I, I've I've thought of this thing, everybody but me, mm-hmm. right? And I, for example, I know a few years ago, if I said everybody but me, Andy might say, "Grow a beard," right? <laughs> Six seven years ago, Andy would say, "Grow a beard." Everybody can do that, but me. Now I mean, you've got a little bit of a f- peach fuzzy. I'm, I mean, it's the equivalent of being like 15. Fuzz buster. <laughs> you got the fuzz buster on there. You have is some that, air. Is that a fuzz buster? Is that like, is that what they used to call like, like a radar? Like it was like a radar detector? Oh, maybe, maybe. Fuzz buster? That sounds like a brand name. I for haven't a, heard for, that for a long time. I got my fuzz buster up there. I can drive as fast as I want. <laughs> it's two words, but it's too many syllables. We'll just call him the, the fuzz buster. So what what would be you in this category? I can't ski, and I've tried. Nobody can. Nobody you, can ski. Oh, everybody can ski. Trust me. Okay, what's well, everybody? Are you talking about ski. snow skiing or water skiing? Um, snow skiing. Yeah, snow skiing. I I tried. I went on the the. It wasn't even intermediate. It was like the bottom hill. The bunny. You know? The bunny course. Maybe not the bunny slope, but you know, it was something. And I I got to the bottom of it, and I took the skis off, and I went and handed them back. <laughs> You didn't do pizza, French fries. I try. I try. I would do the you know, put them together and stuff. And the snow was like, no, you're going. How old were you when you tried this? Six, seventeen, maybe, probably seventeen. Oh, who cares? What a ridiculous notion, anyway. Oh, you get up on top of that hill and put sticks on your legs and go. Well, down. When I watch people ski, it looks fun. I want to do that. I want to have that fun. I guess. I tried I to water ski once. Yeah, and almost drowned. <laughs> Everybody but me thinks. Skiing you got to be able to swim. Worth, worth <laughs> That's trying. kind of a rule with well, water skiing. <laughs> here's it what doesn't look like swimming, but it's involved. <laughs> no, that's not why I almost drowned. So I was 14, and I was with the girls that I was dating. I was with her family. We went out on their boat, and they all water skied. And he was like, do you want to try it? And I'm like, sure. So when you water ski, like you have to learn how to stand up. And the first time I attempted this, they hand me the little thing with the string attached to it and he was like no matter what you do don't let go of this do that first say what you said I, <laughs> that's okay, not so let go. <laughs> i really took that literally so when the boat takes off <laughs> i go to stand up i fall and they drag me for like a half a mile before anybody realizes that i'm still attached and I've, I'm running out of air, and I'm like, I really think I should probably let go of this. <laughs> he's on the, <laughs> bring the boat in. He's on the sidewalk, still grasping on. <laughs> so I finally let go. They realized that I was a lot further <laughs> down the water than I'm. And a lot worse at skiing than you thought you were going to be. I was be. like, all right, that's it for me. When you're with the new girlfriend <laughs> and meeting her family for the first time, it's not a good time to try new things. <laughs> Just ever. <laughs> Expectation versus reality yeah. before people people called it that. They're like, why didn't you let go? I was like, you, you told, told me, me not to. to. <laughs> well, if everything's going all right, <laughs> don't let go. That was my last attempt to uh, water ski. That guy tells that story to this day. <laughs> like he probably, My daughter dated this one boy. Probably, Let me tell you about him. His he, name was Andy. He probably told it at her wedding. <laughs> like during the speech. <laughs> you ain't nothing like that boy that tried to water ski. <laughs> <laughs> told you about that. I'm gonna tell it again. Hey, you did good, sweetheart. For a while there, we were we were concerned. <laughs> hey, remember that one feller had a trailer park tattoo. And tried to water ski. <laughs> you married a dentist, and he got a tattoo in a trailer. That's about how we hoped things would work out. <laughs> That's your daughter. <laughs> it was it was embarrassing. <laughs> what about you, Josh? Mm, what's that? You can't 
Every, everybody else can, but not you. I can pretty much do everything that everybody else can. Really? Really? For the most hmm. part. Bench 300 pounds. <laughs> I mean, yeah. There's nothing that you've ever experienced. That's... Sleep in on a sat- Sunday or a Saturday. No, you can't. I can do. I can do it all. <laughs> you Anything you can that. throw at me. Anything you can do, I can do it better. Hmm. Well, it must be nice. Code. No, I just can't really think. I just don't. Nothing. I don't know. I guess I'm just not good at the game. Nothing comes to me. You're not really good quick. at thinking on your feet. I understand. Uh, yes. Math. <laughs> Everybody can do math, but you. Yeah, at, at all. <clears throat> like. Actually, I'm extremely below average when it comes to. What's sixty math divided math. by three? You don't. Know. I got you. That bad. I get it. That reminds me. Will you please, please, if not today, but at some oh, point. Oh, it 20? Yeah, it's 20. See how long 20. that took? <laughs> 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 my fingers and my toes were all going up under the table. <laughs> Will you please tell the story about when you went to school at, in Carter County? <laughs> we got just enough time for a Carter County <laughs> school story. I know it's probably um, traumatic to you, but it is the funniest. <laughs> I think about it pretty regularly. Every I, time that uh, we've driven near there, I'm like imagining you there with blonde hair and a Green Day t-shirt. No, on. it was uh, fire engine red hair. <laughs> and do you want to know what I was wearing that, that day, that one day that I went and got you know dealt with? Other than a wallet chain? To my knees. <laughs> The baby blue, the baby blue seven day Jesus shirt. Oh, wow. oh my God! With with the faces on it and the with yeah, you guys standing the there, world tour kids, on the back, yeah, and you with Matt Sumter in the leopard uh, print. I think it was. You stood in your mirror that morning and thought, "This is what I'm going with. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a good day. Today's going to be better than yesterday." <laughs> no, I got it was my only world one day. Tour. I never went back. I got my world. That was your first day. My first and last day. At, at Boyd School. At which county? Yeah. Carter County? It was the same school <laughs> as the first school shooting that I remember ever reading about. Really? When we were kids. Uh, wow. Yeah, he was uh, the kid. Uh, I don't remember the name, but it was uh, he uh, mimicked a Stephen King short story. Mm-hmm. He wound up shooting uh, his teacher and a janitor that heard the shot that wow. came in. This was Well, after you tell this story, we're probably going to understand why that would well, happen. Well, that was, I mean, yeah, Before it was, or after? No, no, it was after, but it was like... I was I, I thought I was like oh like that so kid. what happened so when you went there my uh, my dad remarried and my stepmom uh, they were all out in uh, right outside of Grayson which is actually called Hitchens but it's basically Grayson it's right there Kentucky yeah so I went to this new uh, school there high school and uh, didn't know anyone at the time and. I wouldn't say at my high school I was I wouldn't say like I was like popular, but I've just always gotten along with everyone. I've, you blended in. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm quick to make friends. Like I'm mouthy, you know, I can, you know, crack a joke or whatever. I can And I can, you went from a school that had two thousand kids in it to however many Yeah. Like probably three hundred. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a big like difference. I, I what seemed, grade were you? Uh tenth. Okay. Tenth grade, I think. I seem to be the only fella there what not year is fancy this? in cowboy boots. <laughs> I seem to. Uh, this was 1990 what? Mm. Eight. I bet. No. Uh, 99 was graduating. So like 97, 96, 97. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I go there. <laughs> I go there the first day and I go to the principal's office for them to assign me my classes. So, and I swear this came out of the chick's mouth she says well you know we know that we see that you know you're a little different and artistic so we're going to set you some classes up where you'll be with like-minded <laughs> oh kids that are you know more like you kidding. first class we're not going to worry about your education first class she sends me to was agriculture <laughs> so we see that you're a weirdo <laughs> And one of them freak types. Were there weirdos in there? So we're no. There were uh, there were two other dudes, and I uh, uh, eventually found them, and we started a punk band. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> uh, but the first class, she you guys look me, like you might be in a punk band. <laughs> you guys know this one chord? Let's go. Um, Tilly. So that's how you met Dunks, isn't it? Yeah, and and Mike. Yeah. I don't remember Mike, but I remember Doug. Yeah, Man, we own punk rockers here. Yeah. 
man we've seen you getting kicked pretty hard over there, man i know it sucks man <laughs> He Check plays it. the drums and I play the bass guitar. If you want to be in a punk band, we're ready for you. I got to play the drums because I can't even stand anymore after what they did with me. But uh, no, yeah. So she's like, "Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna send you with these like minded people, and you're gonna find some friends." And they send me to how to learn how to farm. Um, and you can't make that up. So. I get to the I love class. how they didn't care about your education at all. They're like, you kind of look a little weird. We're going to put <laughs> these, you with weird these kids. Boys are gonna kill we got a you. weird I'm sure schedule. I walked in there and they're like, he's not going to make it anyway. It's just, <laughs> they're going to be let's, let's just, frame. <laughs> he's not going to make it anyway. Let's just get this over as quick as possible. That's what it's, the game plan We're seemed to be. Send him in the general population. <laughs> Execute him. <laughs> this boy's different. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, we're going to show you how we do. <laughs> So they send me in there. I walk into the class. And, and it's like is, when you go, like somebody shows up in a country bar and the jukebox comes to a screeching halt. I had fire engine red hair, the old school 90s, like the, the jeans are like basically like, like they're the Jinko jeans. They weren't Jinkos, but they were that big. Like, you know, just the tip of my Chuck Taylor sticking out, wallet chained down to my knees, and wearing that baby blue seven day Jesus shirt. So I get to the class, and no lie. The teacher has a spittoon on his desk. He's Where chewing, else is he he's supposed chewing to spit tobacco? <laughs> Where else is he going to put it? He's chewing tobacco. Bend over and I'll show you. He's chewing tobacco and uh, he's he's got the big uh, metal spittoon on, on the desktop and he sets me down in there. I sit down. I'm like, oh my God. I'm just, how did I get here? Just, I'm just, I'm, Are ter- you terrified? I'm terrified. Yeah. Absolutely. And then I kind of feel something on my side. And I look down, and cat behind me is just kind of gently kicking my wallet chain. And I kind of just turn and just kind of look at him, like, you know, kind of confused. And he just goes, I bet you I could rip that off. I said, yeah, sure you could. He goes, want me to try? Why would I want you to try? I said, no, I'd rather you didn't. Right around that time, him and – now, mind you, this is in the middle. Class is going on, and this teacher's just watching this. These kids literally like get up, move seats like to get closer around me, him and his, <laughs> his, his buddies. And they all three take their ink pens, crack them open, and start flinging ink at me. Wow. Right I there in the middle of class. I don't remember this part. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. So this is what prompts <clears throat> me to just, I'm just like, dude, I just get up and start to walk out. And the teacher's like, ho, 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 where you, where are you going? <laughs> freak this is what <laughs> this is what we do to people yeah, you're gonna yeah, have to yeah. just endure it yeah you're gonna take your inking and like it so he goes whoa, whoa, whoa where are you going i said I'm, I'm going i'm going to the bathroom that's my response and he goes we don't do that here Good. i said you, you guys don't go to the bathroom and i just continued to walk out like anybody could even tell you like this already like i was already terrified and fed up because <clears> i'm just i wasn't a probably very shaking at this point. well i anyone that knew me like i'm not the you know, I'm not the, type. exactly like it took a lot to get me just to get up and walk out in the other class to my chagrin. As soon as I get out of that classroom, that, that class was like in a little trailer type thing that actually right outside was, it was at the school. I mean, it was five feet from the actual right. school building. It was outside. It was, right. The second I get out there, a bell rings <laughs> for like the class season. wasn't over, but it was like this weird, like, inner like break like yeah. in the middle of class or whatever those dudes completely come out i get pushed i'm on the ground and they just gather around me with the cowboy boots just taking turns kicking are you serious i don't remember any of this part this is this, that's yeah. the story it that was, sounds to me like the story it was yeah. the the wallet chain part that i found most hilarious oh, yeah, the, the teacher in the yeah. spittoon but yeah, yeah i no, didn't know I that was, happened no yeah and i took that and it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't as brutal as it sounds. sounds they were you know they weren't like i wasn't bloody or anything it's like still that. i was dramatic. just right and i what were they saying just you know we're gonna show you i mean you i can't i don't think i'm allowed to say shirt. it <laughs> yeah the same thing the guy at walmart called me when I had <laughs> well i was just getting ready to say did one of these kids grow up and follow you to walmart that day and he doesn't <laughs> <laughs> son you look familiar here. he don't look like us so that means he wants to kiss us <laughs> That was the logic. That was the logic. So I got so it it they stopped 
I got up, dusted myself off. I walked home. I, it wasn't that far away. Okay. I, I lived. I mean, it was less than a mile, probably. Just <laughs> walk into class. My dad's just sort of confused. Why are you just here? Like, yeah. yeah. Just like no, and like, and I just straight up basically refused. So you went to half of one class at that school. Mm-hmm. It was immediate. Wow. Mm-hmm. You didn't even get through one class. I got home and started reading every Stephen King book. One day, I just decided to go for a walk. <laughs> Yeah, we don't do that around here. I'm less, <laughs> less than 30 yards from my house. Before something comes flying out of a truck. Truck drives by, glass bottle. <laughs> like, miss Are you me. serious? Yeah. yeah. Were they waiting on you? No, they didn't. No, no it's just. Opportunity. Just there's <laughs> one. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm telling my parents about all this. I'm like, I'm, like, I'm not going back. It's not happening. So. They take me to this place. It's called the Adult Education Center. And basically what they do there is they go and you go there. They give you a test to see like what kind of level that, that you're at, like grade-wise, whatever. And they tutor you to either take your GED or like your high school. They get you past the high school. Right. So I go there and they're like, you know, we're going to give you a couple tests, see what level you got, see what you need help with the tutor to, so you can take, you know. So you split 60 into three and they made you valedictorian <laughs> of Grayson. <laughs> We're getting there. Now keep in mind, keep in mind, I come there just, you know, never studied, never cared. By the time, I did well in school until I got a guitar. This boy wrote just, on this page. And then I just didn't Something care anymore. Read. So I get there straight up like C and even D student. Sit down there, like, go ahead and take this test and, and let me know when you're finished. You've got an hour. Okay. If Bill has three pigs, I finished. And you have three pigs. <laughs> well, that if means we got, all got a barbecue business tomorrow. <laughs> if you've only got one ink pen, <clears throat> but there's three weirdos. In front of you. That's how, do you, how do you get enough ink on them? <laughs> That's called a ratio. So <laughs> we don't like Horatio. We kick him. <laughs> so. Me and my dad and my whole family, we, we're all ratios. <laughs> um, so they give me an hour to take this test. I straight up finish it in 20 minutes. So she looks over it, she grabs it, and she says, oh, okay, w- would you mind taking this test for me? I'm like, sure. You have an hour. It was, like it was basically minutes. the same exact test. You're like <laughs> Sheldon Cooper of Grayson County. I hand it back in. Her. She says, I hand it back into her, and she goes, well, Congratulations, you just passed high school. <laughs> you just passed high so school. So I go home that day, literally walk in the door, and my dad goes, How'd it go over here? Great, I'm done. <laughs> my dad straight up, and it's just type of, you know, and he wasn't a jerk or anything, just the way dad is. The way he's like, No, you're not. Like, that's not happening. You're this age, you've got this many years of school left, you're going to go. And you're going to do he school. He didn't care. So, for the le- next year or so, I went to the adult education center and I tutored potential dropouts. Gosh. And, and and mostly stayed on the screeching weasel chat room. I was going right to say when the internet was blowing up. So they I was assigned say, that's me. That's not very punk stop, rock. Stop! 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 They assigned me my first kid, which was Dunks. No. Oh, who? The bo- Captain Inkpen. No. You're kidding me. <laughs> Captain Inkpen. You are kidding me. I cannot make it up. Hand, that hand guy up. comes in what? and you got to tutor him. Yep. And did you help him? Was he like, I'm sorry. He came in. I, said, I can't read. Here you go. They want you to do this worksheet. I don't understand. I don't care. Do the worksheet. Here, it's wrong. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't. I don't care. But your hair. Did, yeah. did he ever pass? Me plus t- <laughs> equals you fail. <laughs> oh, God. I did not help. <clears throat> I was not helpful. It's our last episode ever. It's been great. <laughs> it's been great. Music. What would be hilarious is if somehow <laughs> Captain Inkpen hears this podcast and either seeks out his revenge because you're making fun of him or no. seeks you out to apologize to no, you. No, he'll come on the show and explain. Ken. So how did you meet? Dunks and the other dude. How, like, how did you guys start a band? It because you didn't go back. So, how did you meet them? It was. It, it's such a small town. It was literally like everybody there knew. I've heard tell you're a punk, ain't you? I, I heard tell there's another <laughs> couple. There's of, another one that got of, here, and but now boy. he. I heard he's got a guitar. 
<laughs> so tell <clears throat> tell Mike there's a new one and he's got a guitar. What know? do the neighbors think of punk rock at your house? Where did you practice? We practiced in at the bass player's house, and he lived in like the super nice, like suburban, like three story, like little <clears throat> cul de sac. Yeah. So what were you guys angry about then? How did you come to <laughs> contact Cap- your Captain songs? Inkpen. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening. If you have any questions or comments, drop us a line at askandy at colormedad. That's D-A-D-D dot com. We want to thank the good old boys at the Ozark Mountain Daredevils dot com for the killer bumper team. Check them out. And check us out on the web at colormedad. That's D-A-D-D dot com.